We would like to start our presentation with the land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that we are on the territories of treaties 6, 7, and 8, the traditional gathering place for the Indigenous peoples whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our learning and teachings as educators. We would like to take a silent moment with you all to join us in reflecting how your treaty land influences your being and continues to create a safe and curious path for you to follow. Now we invite you to join us on our learning journey in our professional learning community presentation, which will be presented by Bokum Choi, McKenna Dick, Samantha Rudd, and Jocelyn Scott. The TQS indicator and competency we chose for this project was applying foundational knowledge about First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, specifically owning in on the third indicator using the programs of study to provide opportunities for all students to develop a knowledge and understanding of and respect for histories, cultures, languages, contributions, perspectives, experiences, and contemporary contexts of First Nation, Métis, and Inuit. Guiding our question process, as a group, we brainstormed areas of interest and places where we felt needed development in terms of the employment of the teacher quality standards guidelines. As we collaborated, we found common ground for development with TQS5, more specifically ways that we can incorporate that competency to our various programs of study. Later, we emailed McKenna, who was unable to be in class due to prior commitment as emailed for her thoughts. She was very excited to be part of this collaboration because she was on the same page in terms of how she felt and where she knew needed development in her teaching. After emailing Sharon for feedback on her question, we confirmed we were on the right path and began our research portion. Researching together and collaborating, we came to these two questions. Firstly, how might Indigenous sacred teachings or the five R's, which we will get into more later in the presentation, be authentically and holistically woven into teachers' planning? Further, what might be some instructional strategies that would honor these teachings? Some things that influenced us for why we chose this question firstly was lifelong learning. We felt this inquiry to be important to our development and we were able to recognize that we will continually work on this throughout our career. We know and understand that incorporating Indigenous knowledge into our studies and our pedagogy is going to be something that we'll be developing throughout our whole entire career, so we knew that this would be an important opportunity for us to delve into that. Secondly, we saw an opportunity to increase authenticity in our teaching. We all have noticed a lack of Indigenous knowledge incorporation during our varied field experiences, or else the incorporation itself being somewhat tokenized and inauthentic. So we wanted to do this research to see how we can make that more authentic and incorporated more in our future teachings. Lastly, we wanted to do some research in terms of incorporation. As mentioned with the lifelong learning piece, there are always gonna be challenges and learning that comes with incorporating Indigenous knowledge. Myself particularly and some other of my classmates have found some difficulties incorporating it into some other classes, for example, like chemistry, where there aren't as many facile ways to bridge the two of them together in a meaningful way. And this is how we build our knowledge. At the initial meeting, we echoed with each other the importance of strategies to implement indigenous knowledge in various ways through feedback and reflections on our own practice. In recent practicum, uh, Jocelyn and Sam were able to apply talking circles and storytelling, but they wanted to learn more about the two I'd seen teaching strategies besides a talking circle and the storytelling. Also, Bogan found the need for indigenous culture and knowledge in practical teaching as there were little or no modification of westernized teaching content. Through the discussion and brainstorm, the group members agreed to work on holistic weaving in indigenous ways of knowing, being, and doing into the program of study focusing on TQS 5C. And also, we narrowed down the group inquiry to Indigenous sacred teachings, or called the five R's. 
Our collective research has led to our findings about the possible ways for our group to truly weave indigenous sacred teachings in education while providing an opportunity to know their worldview. Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Jocelyn and I was in charge of organizing and analyzing our research findings. So throughout our research, um, we split it and divided it into three categories, invisible barriers, the five R's of Indigenous pedagogy, and cracking those invisible barriers with the five R's. So when reflecting um, about ways to improve our understanding about TQS standard number five, subsection C, we really wanted to start with those invisible barriers that we believe hold us back when and what some of the research um, has witnessed firsthand. So in educators of non-Indigenous backgrounds must be open to incorporating Indigenous pedagogies into their teachings. Mooney states that through her experiences, plans to indigenize curriculums do not identify specific tasks or procedures for implementation. Non-Indigenous academics are unfamiliar, ignorant, and misinformed about Indigenous knowledges and pedagogies due to being educated only through a westernized lens. Jill also states that a barrier to curricular integration is when teachers pick and choose various lessons about Indigenous people, but do not provide substantial and comprehensive knowledge. With this lack of knowledge, Indigenous pedagogy is often less to left tokenized by non-Indigenous educators. Because the curricular system has no standard, it is impossible to generate a curriculum that which is given to us lovingly by from the spirits, and it does not make sense for everyone to master the same body of information. It is with an open mind and heart that educators need to delve deep into their own biases and discomforts to understand what will work for them in their classroom when incorporating Indigenous pedagogy. Batiste encourages educators to think about the lifelong learning of Aboriginal individuals by respecting their diverse learning styles in a holistic manner based on their spiritual, intellectual, emotional, and physical selves. So now we are going to move on to the five R's of Indigenous pedagogy. Uh, this framework was given to us and guided um, and guided to us by uh, Tessero and colleagues, and they suggest using the five R's framework work of respect, reciprocacy, relevance, responsibility, and relationships when attempting to decolonize westernized teaching practices and teaching Indigenous ways of knowing. Respect focuses on the need to recognize and respect First Nations cultural norms and values. Reciprocacy is the practice of understanding and recognizing the importance of all party involvement through positive relationships. Relevance ensures that information and learning is relevant to First Nation cultures and ways of knowing. Responsibility is a collective understanding between teacher and students to continuously recognize and uphold cultural values and norms. Relationships are also upheld between teacher and learner and between community, culture, and school. And they are also the, underlie of the underlying aspect of Indigenous education. So those are the five R's, respect, reciprocacy, relevance, responsibility, and relationships. All right. So now we're gonna talk about cracking the barriers with the five R's and what we can do to start this process. So FNMI implementation in the classroom can be aided by the first people principles of learning. Using these foundational learnings, educators can seamlessly weave what they know about the five R's into their practice. Once there is an understanding of the principles of learning, learning resources can now be applicable and focus on the five R's model. Understanding that each First Nation has its own unique identity, values, and practices, we must consider the land on which we reside. Simpson states that education comes from the roots up and that knowledge comes from being enveloped by the land. 
to enhance our teachings about Indigenous foundational knowledges and incorporating them into the Alberta Program of Studies, educators must understand that there is no implementation of Indigenous pedagogy without knowing how the lands hold teachings. Mooney provides um, key discussion questions um, that educators can ask themselves to reflect on their own biases, insecurity, and ignorances. And these um, discussion questions uh, can be represented in this figure right here. Um, her research is very personalized. It is based on her actually getting her ed degree and at different points throughout her ed degree. So um, her reflective questions are split up into five categories and I took the land, the play space as a starting point for this. So you can pause this and reflect if you want to, but we're gonna get to the next part here shortly. So what I do invite you all to do is to pause this video right here. Let me get myself out of the way. Um, and I want we want you to look at the first people's principles of learning. We invite you to choose one of the principles or one that you recognize the most with and reflect on how you have represented this principle using at least one of the five R approaches. You can draw on your responses from previous field experiences, past lessons, or future experiences that you wish to conquer in your classroom. During our live class on Thursday, we will be orally sharing and listening to one another's experiences. I will attach a document in um, D2L that will have both of these um, side by side so you can really look at them and articulate your answer just as an easier reflection process. So now I introduce Samantha to talk to us about the implications of practice regarding our inquiry question. Thank you. Our implications for practice are rooted deeply in the five R's of respect, relevance, reciprocity, responsibility, and relationships, and their centered importance when incorporating Indigenous knowledge and learning across K-12 curriculums. So when looking at the first R, which stands for relationships, educators should be focusing on creating relationships that are reciprocal between teacher and student and should foster connection to community and self. It became very evident to us throughout our research that we must work to build strong relationships with each one of our Indigenous students to get to know them on a personal level before we can begin to teach any content at any grade level. This leads us into our next R of respect which can be defined as the need to recognize and apply Indigenous cultural norms and values into our learning environments appropriately. So getting to know your local Indigenous communities and using their relevant and direct resources is a great place to start for any educator at any grade level to foster respect for a holistic educational approach. Implementing culturally responsive pedagogies from Indigenous authors or communities can be achieved cross-curricularly and builds a strong foundation of respect um, by showing effort and a willingness to teach from a non-European lens. Regarding our third R of relevance in Indigenizing education, our lessons should always strive to be relevant to Indigenous culture and knowledge systems. So um, educators should be considering the diverse learning styles in a holistic manner. This research really closely aligns with Simpson 2014, who stated Indigenous education is not Indigenous or education from within our intellectual tra traditions unless it comes through the land and unless it occurs in an Indigenous context using Indigenous processes. So implementing relevant Indigenous knowledge into our daily lessons is really key in mending these strained relationships. Also, when looking at implications for our own practice, it became really evident to us um, that we have a lifelong responsibility as educators to weaving in Indigenous knowledge into our lessons. This responsibility also extends to all stakeholders in the school, including students, staff, administration, parents, uh, etc. Moving on to our last R of reciprocity, which has a sole focus of honoring student voice and choice by creating equitable relationships. Uh, 
A strategy that is cross-curricular and can be implemented at any grade level is giving your student a choice um, and a voice in the classroom to really feel valued and respected. Specifically, giving our indig Indigenous students and their families a voice in our classroom is crucial in mending these relationships and working towards a brighter future in education. Batiste 2013 really hit the nail on the head by stating, every school is either a site of reproduction or a site of change. Education can be liberating or it can domesticate and maintain domination. It can sustain colonization in neo-colonial ways or it can decolonize. So thank you all so much for listening to our presentation. We really appreciate it. And we hope that you learned a little bit more um, about Indigenous education. Thank you.